I'm Silas from Cyclocross World, and we're here at the headquarters just getting um, some tubulars glued up, ready for the season to start. It's going to be running through the whole process, start to finish, um, give you a couple quick tips. And so starting out here, we're using the Zip 303 carbon tubular. Um, and today we're going to be gluing up a Challenge Lemus um, team edition. So starting out, just when you're getting going, it's really important to have everything that you need to make sure you're not going to get caught up anywhere along the way. Um, so quick check of just what we have here. Um, first of all, good work stand, um, wheel, whatever glue. We're using the Vittoria Mastic One glue. Um, you want to have some acetone to clean the rim. Um, gloves, if you prefer to use them. Towels, clean rags to clean off. Um, and then acid brushes, you can get acid brushes pretty much anywhere at a you know, hardware store or online at um, cyclocrossworld.com. Um, we're also using Belgian tape here. Um, this is used in combination with the glue just to give a really strong bond between the rim and the tire. There's a lot of different methods as to how to go about gluing up a tubular, especially for a cross race. We do actually five layers of glue. Um, we do two on the rim and then a layer of the Belgian tape over the glue and then two on the tire, one more over the tape, and put it all together. To begin, I usually just take some acetone on a clean rag and clean off the rim. Doesn't matter if it's carbon, aluminum, whatever. So once the rim is clean, um, it's time to start gluing. I usually don't open up the glue until I'm right ready to use it, because sometimes when it sits out in the air, um, it can, tends to get kind of tacky. So I start at the valve um, hole in the rim. Or you give a marker every time you know when you go around the rim once. First coat of glue on the rim, I used, usually do a pretty, pretty thick layer. Um, you know, really important to make sure you get from one side of the rim all the way to the other. You don't want to leave any bare areas. You know, when I see tires that roll off most often, um, if you look at the rim, there's definitely areas on the rim or the tire where glue was not applied, and that weak spot in the and the seal is probably what's going to lead to a tire coming off. Another couple things to keep in mind when gluing the first layer on the rim. Um, like I said, you want to get every, you know, one side to the other. Don't leave any gaps. Um, but you also don't want to go over. So usually what I do is, as I glue, I usually just take my finger and wipe off any excess glue just to make sure the sides are clean. Um, and you know, get a pretty good layer of glue on the first, on the first side. So after finishing the first layer on the rim, it's time to move on to the first layer on the tire. Um, today we're gluing up a Challenge Lemus. Um, starting off, I usually inflate it up so I can hold it in like a figure eight pattern. Doesn't need a ton of air, but just enough so it keeps its shape. And again, I start right at the valve. Nice even layer. Um, you don't want to get too, you don't want to make it too thick. You don't want it to get all chunky or anything. Kind of keep it pretty light. And as you go, it will kind of dry up and soak into the uh, base tape. And very important to get all the way from one side to the other. You don't want to leave any uh, bare areas. So in terms of the count of how many wheels for the team, um, how many of these tires actually glued, uh, I want to say it's probably close to about 70. We usually have about 35 sets of wheels, um, ranging from file treads to mud tires, um, never in between. All right, so we're just finishing up the first layer on the tire here. Um, so again, try to keep the layers really smooth side to side. Um, don't do it too thick, you know, and as this sits, we'll, do, we'll be doing the next layer on the rim. Um, and this will kind of dry up a little bit and soak into the, uh, soak into the base tape of the tire. Um, in between layers on the tire, I always deflate it. Um, when you inflate the tire, it actually kind of shrinks in on itself. Um, and you don't want the glue to dry that way. You want to let the tire, let all the pressure out so it goes back to its normal size and that way it can kind of dry like that. Okay, so back to the rim here. Um, layer number two. Start at the valve hole in the rim, um, do a pretty even, light layer. Um, some people tend to do like really thick layers of glue and that 
is not necessary and it also just ends up kind of getting pushed out the sides of the tire when you mount everything up so just light even layers um, keep cleaning off any glue that ends up on the side of the rim on the uh, question of how long to let the glue dry in between layers um, the answer really is as fast as you can do them um, you don't need to really let it dry because it'll tack up in a matter of minutes I mean I can do a wheel start to finish um, if it's a brand new wheel with the Belgian tape and everything should be able to do it in about anywhere from half an hour to you know if you're kind of new to it maybe an hour but the whole process that's start to finish so there's no waiting you know there's no leaving the tie overnight um, I start on the rim, do the rim, do the tire, do the rim, you know, you just alternate back and forth and by the time you go to glue up the next layer, it, the, it's already dry enough that you can put another layer on. Time to put the Belgian tape on. All right, so we've worked our way all the way around with the Belgian tape, using your thumb to push it in. Um, once you get to the end here, you just hold it up, take a pair of scissors and cut it just so that it'll come short of the valve hole. I just use my fingernail and go all the way around the rim, make sure it's pushed in all the way. Back onto the tire for the second and final layer on the tire. Um, again, I had it deflated while it was drying, so now it's time to reinflate it. Just enough to hold the shape so I can hold it in this position. And it's back to the gluing. So again, start at the valve, work your way slowly around, nice smooth, even layer, and you don't want to put too much. So we just finished up the second layer here on the tire. So this is ready to be mounted onto the rim. Um, we still need to do one more layer on top of the Belgian tape there. So this is just going to again get deflated um, and hung up to dry for a few minutes while we finish up the rim. Last layer on the rim here, this will be glue layer number three that goes on top of the Belgian tape. Um, but first you want to peel off the backing of the um, backing of the Belgian tape. Should be able to just peel it right off. On top of the tape is a really light layer. You don't need much glue at all. Um, it's just to kind of finalize that bond between the tire and the glue. Finished up the final layer here on the tape. Um, as you can see, it's pretty uh, thin layer. Um, and before I mount the tire on, I let it dry for just a couple minutes, just so it gets, um, it's not so wet. All right, so this is ready to be mounted. You have the tire here um, with two layers of glue on it and not a lot of pressure. This is almost flat, but just a, just a very little small amount of air to keep the shape. Um, the more air you put in it, the tighter it is and the harder it is to stretch onto the rim. So I usually keep it um, pretty, pretty low air. All right, so time to mount up the tire here. This is the part that everybody dreads when it comes to gluing up tubulars. There's a couple tricks that really can help you do it. Keep the tire, not a lot of pressure, pretty soft, just enough to keep a little shape in it. Uh, make sure you have the direction correct, you put it on the right way. Once it's on there, there's things on there and it's not going to come off easily. So um, make sure you're ready to go. I use a nice piece of cardboard on the ground, something that I can put the rim on and it's not going to get all dirty and mess everything up. So start at the valve here, and you just slot that right in, and try to keep, um, prevent the sidewall from getting all over the rim. So once you put the valve in, and just rest it on the ground. And this is really a very crucial part here to get it on at the end, so it's not too difficult. You want to really stretch this as hard as you can, and work your way slowly down keeping everything centered. The harder you stretch this here, the easier it's going to be at the very last steps of mounting, mounting the tire. All right, so at that point I usually just pull it up, tuck it into my waist, grab onto the tire, and just stretch it right over. So that's how you put it on. 
Uh, make sure you don't have, you know, tons of glue everywhere. And then you want to inflate it. Pressure wise at this point, I usually go up to, I don't know, maybe around 40 PSI or so. It doesn't have to be exact. And then it's just a matter of making sure everything is seated on straight. Usually give it a couple spins. So you can see where the uh, bumps and everything are. These challenge tires, um, they do mount up, I think, pretty easily compared to some of the other tires out there. Um, and they are very straight too, which is nice. Some of them, some of the other tires I've worked with, once you get them mounted up, they're all wobbly, but these actually mount up quite nicely. And there's your finished product. All right, so that's how the pros do it. Now you have all the useful information, all the tips, um, everything you need to be able to mount up your own tubulars and uh, hit up the races. Um, you can get all the supplies you need at cyclocrossworld.com. Um, you can get brushes, glue, we have a whole range of tires, um, everything you would need to be able to do this.